Hello there, little lads and ladies. I hope this thing is working. It's taken a motion picture of me. Clear as day. Oh. Okay, I think I've got this strange thing figured out. Hello there. It's me, Margaret. Today is May 2nd, 1918. A lovely day here in Austin, Minnesota. And I am the housekeeper at the home here, and I work for Mr. and Mrs. Hormel. That's why I'm wearing a me housekeeper apron. And me housekeeper dress. Me housekeeper collar. And me housekeeper cap. Oh, and I'm also wearing this special camphor necklace. It's called camphor because I put little pieces of camphor tree in it. It's an old wives tale that the smells from the camphor will make all sicknesses go away. I figure now is a good time to wear one. Right now, there is a pandemic happening in the year 1918 and it's being caused by a virus called influenza or the flu and it's getting thousands of people sick. That's why Mr. and Mrs. Hormel have asked me to do all that I can to keep the house clean and safe. And I'd like to show you all the things that I've been doing here at the home. Let's see if I can get this to turn around. Oh yes, there we go. Take a look here. This is me room at the Hormel house. Oh, and I've got this lovely sewing machine. I've been sewing masks for everyone that lives here. The doctors say that the virus spreads from our coughs and sneezes. So if we wear masks when we go around town, it can help keep us from getting sick. I've made one for Mrs. Hormel and myself. And over here, I'm getting ready to cut fabric for masks for the men, Mr. Hormel, the cook and the butler. But that's not all. Let me take you into the next room. I'll show you what I've been doing over here. Right in here, I've been cutting squares of fabric. Mrs. Hormel is sewing the squares together to make quilts. The quilts will be for anyone needing to keep warm when they are sick. Once these pieces are ready here, I'll take them all the way over to Mrs. Hormel's sitting room. That's where she makes the quilts. Now to get to the sitting room, I just go right through this hallway here, past my bedroom, through the washroom, and down this wing of the home. See these lovely stairs? I get to go down the stairs. And then I'll go up these lovely stairs. Now, we must keep quiet because Mr. and Mrs. Hormel are sleeping. That is their bedroom mm -hmm. with the door closed, you see. Oh, but here is a lovely picture of them. Ah, yes. Mr. George Hormel and Mrs. Lillian Hormel, a very important couple here in Austin, Minnesota. George is, of course, the man who started Hormel Foods. And his wife, Lillian, has been a teacher at Austin High School. Oh, they are the kindest, most generous people I've ever worked for. They are always trying to help others around town and all over the country. Today I told them to slow down and rest so that they don't get sick with the flu. I'm glad they listened to me. All right, over here into the sitting room. This is one of my favorite rooms in the whole house. See, it's got wonderful windows for great lighting as Mrs. Hormel quickly quilts away. Oh, and look here. She completed this lovely pink quilt already. Oh, that's another one to add to our number of quilts that have been made this year in 1918. I'm sure this blanket will go to someone that really needs it. Oh, and let's just hope no one in our town will get the new flu virus. You know, I can show you the newspapers we have, telling us all about who's been getting sick with the virus. For that, we'll need to go downstairs. 
It's right this way. Now you might like to know, I've been washing the railings here and everywhere that we touch. I read that the hospitals are using antiseptic solutions to keep things clean, but I don't have that. I just use hot water with a little bit of fresh lemon juice. It works very well. Oh yes, and down here is the living room. Ah, oh, can you feel that fresh air? Oh, such a lovely May day here in the year 1918. I've been opening the windows as often as possible these days. The public health experts say that fresh air keeps the virus away. Oh, and we've been so lucky to have lovely weather. Mrs. Hormel has been spending a lot of time in her garden. Fresh air is truly one of the best medicines during times like this. Now let's see. Oh, right. I was going to show you the newspapers. For that, we'll need to come over here into the library. This is the room where the family reads books and newspapers. We get the Rochester News and the paper from Moore County. We even get the New York Times every Sunday. Mr. Hormel has been reading up carefully on everything about the pandemic and the influenza virus. See, these articles from this year, 1918, say that we should stay home as much as possible and keep our distance from others. It even suggests that we stop shaking hands when we say hello. Imagine that, not shaking hands. Oh, and this article tells how the soldiers are faring in the great war across the sea. Thousands of our young men in the military are getting sick from influenza during this war. They are gargling warm salt water to stay healthy. And you know, we are very concerned about this because Mr. and Mrs. Hormel's only child, Jay, is one of the young men serving in the war right now. He just got to France at the beginning of this year, 1918, not long before the virus started spreading. In fact, Mr. Hormel has been typing up letters in this office. And I can show you that right through this door. Right in here is a very important room. This is where Mr. Hormel does a lot of his work. And right over here is his desk with a wonderful typewriter. Mr. Hormel has been typing up letters to Jay. We aren't really sure how much Jay knows about the new virus. So Mr. Hormel has been making sure to give him doctor's orders. Things like making sure to gargle warm salt water, eat all his vegetables and get as much sleep as possible so that he can stay healthy. Oh, poor Jay, I do hope he comes home safely. Oh, do you smell that? I don't know if this thing can smell, but let me take you in here to investigate. Ah, this is the dining room, as beautiful as ever. Part of my job is to keep this room clean, but I smell something. It smells like onions somewhere. Oh, would you look at this? The cook set out a lovely platter of onions, but these are not for eating. Some people say that slicing onion and letting it sit out like this all day will allow the onion to pull the virus right out of the air and kill it. <laughs> I sure hope it works. But I be smelling something else too. Hmm. Let's take a look in the kitchen. Right through these doors is the butler's pantry. And then we come right into the kitchen. Ah, yes. We have been keeping very busy in here, don't you know? The butler, the cook, and me, the housekeeper, spend a lot of time in this here kitchen. Over here is our sink. We've been trying to wash our hands more often to keep the flu germs away. And over here, you'll notice that the cook peeled some oranges. And then he took the orange peels and put them in this pan on the stove. 
You see, right over here. And then he cooked the orange peels until they burned. And he did it on purpose. Some folks in Nebraska say it is another way to keep the air clean from the virus. But, oh, it smells an awful lot. Oof, da. Maybe if I go upstairs, it won't smell as bad. Now, see here, I have a lucky way to get up to me room. This secret staircase takes me on a shortcut upstairs. Isn't that lovely? I'll take you right up here with me. Yes, sir, this staircase comes in handy every day. Can you see? I get a lot of exercise with all of these stairs. Huh. And you see here, we're right back where we started. Right here in me room. Now, I wonder if I can get this to turn around again so it sees me. Now you know a little bit more about how we are facing the pandemic here at the Hormel home in the year 1918. These are strange times in history. And it is a little scary that doctors don't know very much about the flu virus yet. Here's a little Irish blessing that I'd like to leave with you. Health be yours, whatever you do, and may God send his many blessings to you. Take care now, friends.